You know, David prayed. I can't, I don't remember which psalm, right offhand. I think it's in the 140s. And he prayed, he prayed that God would send people into his life to discipline him, to reprove him. And then he prayed that his head would not reject it. Because you want to know something? Our flesh doesn't like to be corrected. Our flesh, no, because our pride says we're never wrong. That's right. So we should be desiring that training. Well, no, let me, let me change that. And instead of saying training, let me say we should desire, greatly desire, that discipling in our life. Yes. Because we're supposed to be disciples of the Master, Jesus Christ. We need him to tell us what's right and what's wrong. We need to hear him say to us, well done now, good and faithful servant, when we're doing it right, to encourage us, to strengthen us. Just as much we need to hear him say, you're doing it wrong. Because he'll say it lovingly for the purpose of getting us to do it right. Listen, I recognize the fact that I have not, and I'm sure you recognize it more than I have. I'm not perfect. Hallelujah. Close. Well, you know what? I may not be perfect yet. That's right. But I am the work of his hands. He is the potter and I am the clay. And he is at work in my life yeah. to perfect me. And the way he does that is by removing the imperfections. Perfection doesn't come from having something added to your life. I mean, we are. The moment you were saved, you became a new creation in Christ Jesus. You have Christ in you. you have, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have what you need. The problem is you have things you don't need. You have things you shouldn't have. This is like, you know, I, I think it was, I always get confused here, whether it was Michelangelo or Da Vinci. I think it was Michelangelo that, you know, that sculpted the statue, the David, you know, that's such a, a famous, one of the most famous statues. And, and he was asked one time, how can you look at this block of stone? I mean, just a big, big block of granite or marble or whatever it was and, and, and be able to chip away. And all of a sudden, there's this incredible rendering of David. And he said, well, it's very simple. I cut away everything that's not David. That's what God is doing with us. That is exactly what God is doing in our lives, in the lives of his bondservants, in the lives of those who desire to be more like him. He's cutting away the things that are not him. Okay? That's discipline. It's discipling. I think we have to get that desire in our hearts to say, Lord, I, I know what I am. Paul said in Romans 7, the very thing I hate, I continue to do. But he went on because he knew the amazing grace of the Lord. And, then, and there in Romans, he said that in Romans 7, and he starts Romans 8 by saying, but there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God's purpose is not condemnation. Peter wrote, and he said that the Father desires that none should perish. All of his action, all of his, all of it, he is doing, his purpose is to bring that the salvation to change people. What's God's purpose in your life? What's God's promise in your life? This is the, the promise, the great promise, whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. Romans 8. Go read it. God has been offering to those who will receive it, being changed back into the image of God, into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. It comes by discipline. It comes by cutting, cutting the, the cancer of sin out of our lives. You may not like the feeling of being disciplined by God, but maybe you better go read Hebrews chapter 12 again, where it says he disciplines those whom he loves where it talks about the fact that if he doesn't discipline you, you're not his child. And where it talks about the fact that by the discipline of the Lord, we become partakers in his holiness. Without a love of God, you're not going to be able to receive that, that correction. You'll not. Mm -hmm. without, that, without the fruit of the Holy Spirit, without the joy of the Lord, when you get corrected, you're going to be a miserable little child. You're going to go off and sulk someplace. And, and complain bitterly about it. Without the fruit of the Holy Spirit, how in the world are you going to have that peace that passes understanding that will give you the power to make this transformation, being transformed by the renewing of your mind, to live the words, the incredible, beautiful words of the Sermon on the Mount?
When you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you know what you're going to want? You're going to want God's instruction in your life. Yeah. You will desire that because you will have the spirit of truth within you. And the truth is God's purpose, God's plan is to keep changing us, to mold us, to shape us into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. Why? Because we'll be nicer people? No, because we will be more faithful witnesses of the love of God in the world. For that is our purpose for being here. Thank you.